BMAC, you good? You good, I'm man? Good. Look I'm at good. you. Yeah, I go. for, for, hey. First of all, you don't, you don't call me today when we were talking about having a phone call. I, we will and have our phone to call. We will have our phone call, Dave. I just had to make sure I was positioned to take down my notes that you will provide for me because I'd have two big time fantasy drafts happening next week that I need to be ready for. And I need all the inside information that wow. you can provide me. So I'm, I needed to make sure I was situated and had paper in front of me. We'll get yeah, you're a little late, which is fine. I, we appreciate your time. But I understand that you were late for a, a team meeting before the Super Bowl. And Ryan, Coach Cower, he, he gave you a little bit of heat for it, right? Yo, so what happened was we just beat the Denver Broncos in the AFC Championship game. We beat, We played in Denver. We flew home. And man, we had fun. We partied all night long. It's my rookie year. Oh, that's Coach Cow. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 keep, no, keep going. Hey, I want to hear about this party. <laughs> hey, Coach. Who, Coach. Was with, who was with you at that party? Uh, oh, all the old vets, the shade, Chris Hope, uh, you know, Joey, Casey. <laughs> uh, I was with all the legends, man. We, we partied. On the plane, as you remember, Coach, going back to Pittsburgh, and when we got home to Pittsburgh, man, we we party, we party. And I, if anybody know anything about me, back, I don't drink. I don't. I never. I, I don't drink alcohol at all. But I can hang with the best of them. And we after we got done partying, we went and had some breakfast. And I told Chris Hope, I told the guys, I said, listen, y'all, make sure y'all call my phone because after I eat this good meal, I'm gonna really be in a. I'm gonna have some good sleep. So I said, please call my phone. They didn't listen to me. They got a they got a missed assignment, an MA, and I was late. And that was the first time Coach Coward ever called me to his office. I remember Dick LeBeau after our defensive meeting, he said Coach Coward wanted to wanted to talk to you. And I was like, oh shoot. <laughs> Man. And Coach Kyle played one of the dirtiest pranks on a rookie that you can play on a rookie when he oh, said yeah. he was taking all my two my Super Bowl tickets. <laughs> no, I that was uh, uh Lonnie Pulele, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. So, or, no, it's Chris Chris Kiamatu, uh, Chris Kiamatu, the offensive lineman. Uh huh. But, uh, yeah, but co uh, coach, it's good to see you, coach. It's good to see you, B Mac. And so, yes, so sir. tell me, I mean, what do you think about our Steelers? Uh, I I I love what I'm seeing so far, coach. And I said this earlier on CBS HQ. If we stay healthy, coach, I think we could be this year's 2021 Cincinnati Bengals team. Remember in 2021, no one expected Cincinnati, number one, to get into, into the playoffs, right? And then when they got into the playoffs, no one expected them to do anything significant. And of course, they made it to the Super Bowl. Right now, in regards to playoff expectations, they're getting some highlights based on what they did in the preseason. But leading up to before preseason play, no one really feel like, felt like Pittsburgh can get in the postseason. And, and if their defense stay healthy, Coach, as you know, with T.J. Watt, some of the additions... They're not afraid of any other team in the division. Heck, they split with every team a year ago with uncertainty at the quarterback position. They have more stability at that position. This team is more talented than what they had a year ago. So they just stay healthy. I think they can do the same thing or something similar to what we saw with that 2021 Cincinnati Bengals team. You know, it's, it's interesting. You, know, you, you look at the secondary and Patrick Peterson, I know you, you, you sat there and do shows with Patrick. And I said, if there's one thing that Omar and Mike did this offseason, not only did they address, obviously, the offensive line, they took care of that. They upgraded that. Two starters no longer there from last year. I mean, it'll be three maybe at some point if Broderick Jones gets in there. Mm -hmm. They've also taken a quarterback and put him back under center. Kenny Pickett's a guy who should be under center. They can run the ball. Najee Harris, a downhill runner. I love what you're talking about, Dave. I think Jalen Warren, you're right. I think he's going to get a lot of play, a lot of play. And I think he's going to be the guy that you'll see a lot. But I do love also what they did in terms of bringing in leadership in the locker room. And you know, you mm -hmm. talked about that team. We had the vets, right? So what do you do? Get Patrick Peterson. What do you do? You go out and get uh, the receiver from um, uh, um, Allen you know, Robinson. Allen Robinson. Yep. And, and I love uh, uh, the tight end that they just got, the Washington, Darnell Washington. Yep. If you watch him in a preseason, he was moving. He was, there was no one who was setting the edge on Darnell Washington. He was setting the edge and making it a nice, easy edge to get around. So they're going to run the football with Frymouth. I, I love where they are with Kenny Pickett. 
And mm. I love it with Kenny Pickens. I mean, I think Pickens has matured. Allen Robinson was the best thing to bring into that receiver room with Deontay Johnson and with uh, uh, Pickens. Yes, sir. I agree. I agree. It's going to be a fun season. But as you know, Coach, you got to stay healthy. Got to stay healthy. You got to have sometimes your young players, rookies, have to make plays in big games. It's something like a guy like, uh, you hear about the, 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 the Indianapolis Colts game. And I'll say this again for all you people at St. Jude's, and thank you for tuning in. What a great place, an amazing place. Brian McFadden, in his rookie year, integral part of what we played on defense. All of a sudden, when Jerome Bennett fumbles, they get the ball at midfield. And here it is. It's like, wow, giving the ball back to Peyton Manning. First down, I think they tried to run it, and all of a sudden, the second and third down, they find the rookie. And you know Peyton Manning's going to find the rookie. And he's out there, and yes, we're playing man-to-man, -man, and we're going to go after Peyton Manning. We're not going to give him any time. Reggie Wayne and Brian McFadden, and Brian McFadden made two plays in the end zone in that game, and you are a big reason why Super Bowl Forty happened. Because you oh. made those two plays. I called, I used to kick her, and Mike Vanderjack missed it by about 30 yards to the right. And we went on, and you made Jerome Bess one of the happiest guys in the world because the last thing he could have remembered for could have been that fumble. So, B Mac, you are a special guy. Love you to death. And the only reason you didn't go in the first round, because I tried to call you, you weren't there in your room on time. So you know what? I said, okay, if he's not there on time, I'll take him in the second round. So you could have been a first round pick. And once again here tonight, you're three minutes late. If we're supposed to say, <laughs> hey, be Mac, if I was going to, if you're going to say, if it's 623, he just said 623. You're supposed exactly. to be 620. My meeting starts at 620. It starts at 620. You come in three minutes late. I would have said the meeting starts at 623. So just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. <laughs> I love you. Can't wait to talk to you guys. Thank you for guys for supporting St. Jude. I've got to go. Now you're making me late for dinner. So I got to go right now. So I love you too, coach. Appreciate it, coach. I love you too. Love you too, man. <laughs> yes, sir. See you guys.